Hello, welcome or welcome back to Truth Seekers Tea. My name is Kate and I am as always so thankful to have you here for today's pick a card reading. I'm sure for those of you that are returning, you may be wondering why I am filming my intro like this. For those of you that are new, I don't usually have my face out for the intro. I am filming this way because I am wanting to introduce you to our sponsor for today's pick a card reading, which is Keen. So before I get too far into what Keen is, I do want to say I was very excited when they reached out to me because I get a lot of questions around personal readings, whether or not I have them. And I unfortunately don't just because it's hard for me to keep up with them. So I was excited to try out this platform because Keen is essentially a network of psychics, tarot readers, and astrologers who are available 24 seven, literally at any time to answer whatever questions you have via call or um, text or whatever, whatever works best for you. And so I wanted to see if this was something I could honestly recommend to you guys. And in my experience, I have been really loving it because I have been wanting to get into astrology or I'm always trying to get more information about my chart, but sometimes I get pretty confused by it, honestly. Um, and so I found an advisor who is super great. They're an astrologer, essentially, and it's given me a lot of clarity around what's going on in my life. Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? Um, what transits are happening? Why do I feel like I'm going through this transition? And it's helped me just... I'm the kind of person who likes to know what's happening and it just makes me feel a little bit better. So I've been really enjoying it for that. And I've also been enjoying it for questions I have around relationships that are not being answered in the pick a card collective readings that I listen to because trust me, I do listen to a lot of them. Um, and sometimes I just end up a little bit more confused if I listen to too many or if I get contradicting messages. And so I found it really helpful to have an advisor there that is just answering questions for your specific situation and it's helped clarify a lot of confusion I've had or especially if I wanted to know answers like right then and there I feel like I have appreciated the fact that there's always an advisor available so you, you're not left waiting you don't have to wait on a wait list or anything like that so if you're interested in getting started with it it's really easy all you have to do is go in and answer some questions about how you're feeling, what topic you want to be asking questions about, and you can even look at what tools you want your advisor to be competent in. Once you do that, you will be matched with your best results. You can click on one of the first few or keep exploring. You can click on their ratings and you can read about them, see what they specialize in, and then go ahead and contact them. I appreciate that you are always in control of the conversation. So you can talk to them as long as you want or as short as you want. So if you're not feeling the vibe, you can literally hang up right then and there. But if you are getting a lot out of it, you can extend the reading as long as you want. I really enjoyed my experience with Keen. If you guys are looking to give it a try, I do have an affiliate link you guys can use, which is trykeen.com slash truthseekers and this will give you the first 10 minutes for $1.99 which actually can be quite a bit of savings because there are readers priced at all different levels and it can be up to $99 of savings so it's a good way to give it a try if you guys are interested I'll have it linked down below so I just want to thank you for listening to this if you've been here and I hope you found it helpful and I also want to thank Keen for the sponsorship opportunity. Now we're going to take it into the pick a card portion of this intro. <laughs> for today's pick a card reading, we're going to be looking at what you don't currently see about the person on your mind. So we are going to be doing this with a pretty thorough energy check in. You can always skip that part, but we are going to start off with what you do see about them. So I can kind of contrast what is really obvious about this person to you and then what you don't see so if you want to just skip to the what you don't see part you definitely can do that but i think the first part is a good energy check-in to make sure that you found the right pile because it should resonate with what you do see about the person so 
for we also will have extended readings i will explain them more within each pile so if you really feel like it resonates for you i will have them linked down below as usual i will have the timestamps linked down below i will have any information about me and the decks that might be helpful for you guys and i'll also have the link for keen down below in case you guys are interested in trying it out so i'm excited to get into your guys's readings or i'm excited for you guys to hear them and I hope that they come to you at the time you most need them. And as always, just take what resonates and leave behind what doesn't. Hello, pile number one. If you chose the Dreamweaver's Tarot, I know I got a lot of questions on this deck. I forgot to put it in the bio, so sorry about that. But this is the Dreamweaver's Tarot. Um, if you guys were in the pile where I used it a couple videos ago, it had a lizard i believe on it and i got some questions about it so this is the dream weaver's tarot and you guys will see it in action as well but welcome to your reading if you also chose the selenite heart in this reading we're going to be looking at what you currently don't see about this person so this is meant to be someone who's significant to you in your life right now we are going to be getting an energy check-in but we're going to be looking at what you do see about them um just to kind of give me some insight as to what you might be missing as well but then it's going to work as an energy check-in for you so um this should be how you clearly view this person so likely you'll know who it is and it hopefully it'll confirm that this is the right pile for you all right so i'm going to pull one of these cards and then we'll look at it at the very end all right what is pile number one currently not seeing about their person what are they not seeing about their person all right there we go so i'll put it right here and we will look at that together at the end okay so this is what how you're currently viewing your person we're also going to clarify with a little bit of tarot so i'm going to start with the animal oracle we have the octopus here so this is cancer um scorpio and pisces so with this coming through this is a very sensitive card so i feel like this is someone you may view as more sensitive or someone that takes on a lot of other people's energy someone that may overextend themselves to help other people or they may accidentally get wrapped up into other people's situations and they may feel a lot of pressure to to fix it essentially i'm getting a vibe here of someone who may accidentally even enable certain people in their life um they may struggle you may view them as someone who might struggle with boundaries they might struggle with confidently being able to say no to things as well we also have the hierophant so with this is Taurus, I have. And so we also have Earth signs here as well. We have Venus in Cancer. So a lot of Cancer energy coming through. And it's coming through, honestly, as a more feminine energy. So even if this is a, a male, like if they identify as a male, this could still be some a certain male in your life that you may almost question their masculinity a little bit or you might just feel like they're a little bit of a softy we also have fear that the light will bring judgment and then the world so let me just get these in a formation okay so the way you view this person this is someone you think doesn't really take risks. It's like you feel that this person is someone that may be like a homebody or wants to play things safe. You may view them as nurturing, but I'm getting kind of a Papa Bear energy where they come across as someone who maybe has more traditional values, someone who likes to be very firmly rooted where they are and with the world here this gives me the sense that you almost view this person as someone who's already grown into their complete form like you kind of view this as someone who may be stagnant or may be not really progressing or someone that is a little bit 
rigid even and with fear that the light will bring judgment this gives me a little bit of a self-conscious energy so you might think that this person has some insecurities and you may even think that a part of the reason that they are so focused on their own stability could be because they're afraid of putting themselves out there um, this person is coming through as with a very feminine energy but I'm kind of getting that this still could be a masculine in your life that you just view more feminine. And if it, this is a feminine, I feel like I've already seen some of the cards that come out for what you don't see about them. And that's why I'm highlighting the fact that a big part of the way you see them is in more of a feminine and nurturing, grounded light. Someone who's very sensitive, emotionally sensitive, compassionate, even timid a little bit is what's kind of coming through. And there's a feeling here that you view this as someone who just wants a traditional life, someone that would just be happy with a home, a significant other, children, a dog, and that's just what would make them, that would be their maximum potential kind of. And you may view this as someone who has a lot of light within them, especially with all these lights in the um, like crown area. It's almost like you feel like this is someone who has untapped potential and you feel like they hold themselves back. And so if this doesn't sound like anyone in your life, then this might not be your reading. Or again, initially I did feel that this could be reversed reading. So if you feel like I'm describing how you think someone views you, that could be the case. Um, but for a lot of you, it just seems like there's a more masculine, there, there may be a, a male gendered person that you view as feminine. I know I've already said that, but that's just what I'm kind of getting. And you may even view this person as someone who gets more of their confidence through supporting other people, or it's like their identity may be sometimes wrapped up in being the nice guy or the nice girl, the person that kind of stays small so they don't make others uncomfortable, someone that may have a more limited worldview, someone who isn't looking to expand or grow too much, someone who just wants to stay in their comfort zone and someone that instead of building their confidence may get a lot of their confidence from other people needing them. Like this could be someone that feels like you may view them as someone that just wants to be needed and that's their MO essentially. So I don't want to spend too much time on it. I do want this to be an energy check-in. But we have a lot of water and earth here, which are both feminine signs. And so that's like taking on the caregiver role, taking on the supporting role. It's like you don't see them as a leader, you see them more as a supporter. All right, how does pile number one view their person? What do they see about them? Let's say like that. What does pile number one see about their person? We have justice. The Ten of Wands. Yeah, there's that like burdened energy, someone who may take on a lot of other people's problems. Someone who may get burdened easily. Yeah, there's an energy here of this person maybe, be, maybe is treated unfairly, but they don't want to speak up for themselves or it's like, They'll take on more of the work than others or they, because of not having as strong of boundaries, they get overwhelmed, potentially. Seven of Wands. How does pile number one view their person? We have the Knight of Wands. The Five of Cups. Eight of Swords, yeah. I'm not surprised to see the Eight of Swords. We also have Judgment at the back of the deck. Um, 
this you see this as someone who has a very soft heart also someone that may some like look at the negative a little bit more often i'm getting you may see this person as someone who sometimes might feel like a victim and then you might be like well why don't you just say something or do something different why don't you protect yourself or why don't you stand up for yourself but it's like you think that this person is too afraid to too afraid of what other people's reaction will be if they do not allow themselves to be victimized essentially like with justice here there's just a sense that that this person can be sometimes sulking or mopey or sad because of maybe being treated unfairly or maybe just being exhausted things like that feeling like things aren't fair but then they don't stand up for themselves and i feel like with judgment here it's like you may view them as someone who doesn't want to see the truth of situations or maybe doesn't even want to see the truth of their own actions like they may be you almost see them as someone who's comfortable in this more victim like role and i'm curious why is the knight of wands here it's like they don't take action is what I'm getting. Let me just clarify though. Yeah, four of cups. It's like in instead of um, taking action towards what they feel is right or true, they just stay in their complacency, like not being happy, but then not doing anything about it. Like I feel like the four of cups is such a quintessential card where someone isn't really satisfied or they're not really open to offers of help or they it's like they're not going to do anything about it and they don't really want help they kind of just want to be in that sort of woe is me energy um and i don't think this is the only way you view them i just think this is actually giving us more clarity as to what you don't see about them because it's actually very different than this energy i'm just gonna tell you that right now so it's like maybe this is how you see them sometimes especially highlighting some of their negative traits and so what i'm getting as well for you guys pile number one this could be someone who's like interested in you or someone that you might be in a relationship with or you might be dating or you they may, you may even just be friends with this person but maybe you know that they like you or something and i feel like you have all these reasons in your mind why this isn't someone you should take seriously but i think it could come and i just read something today it's super it was super um on point for me at least but i feel like it also pertains to this reading because it talks about how we are actually very afraid of love we're actually afraid of having someone in our life not hurt us because it's kind of terrifying to surrender and open up completely with trust to a person and I think sometimes because we have wounds around doing that if someone isn't having any overt negative actions towards us we can start picking at their personality or we can start thinking that they aren't attractive in some way but it's actually more of a reflection of our a subconscious desire to sabotage it or to push something good away and it's why it's so much easier to feel so drawn to unavailable people because it becomes an escape and there's no real threat of intimacy and of course we all say we want love and we this that the other but then when it comes down to it it's actually very triggering especially if there's unhealed wounds around attachment and though it those really start to get triggered the same the same old pain is triggered when you are hurt again by someone who is unavailable like that's a very familiar pain but we also like it because it's familiar it's a different kind of scary when someone isn't in alignment with isn't in alignment with people who previously hurt you it's almost jarring because it's different and it's hard to trust and then you want and then you have to look at yourself and go Honestly, this person isn't mistreating me in any of the ways that I'm mistreated. Like maybe there's something I have to look at within inside myself. And our ego is very talented in not letting us do that. So I'm kind of seeing a situation like this going on, but you know, take what resonates and leave the rest. So we're gonna now go into what you don't see about them. Get some mild water.
And I feel like there's just a highlight on the weaknesses here for what you do see. And because of that, I feel like there's a lens in which you're looking through that's trying to keep you safe maybe from, from vulnerability and letting someone into your heart maybe. And yeah, in a, a way that we do that. And what's super interesting I wanna say also is like a part, a lot of you listening might be like, I feel like this is more of what my person does but that's usually when we're going after a person that is unavailable to us and then we're trying to be open to them then they might look at us and pick us apart and run away from us because they're doing the same thing we would do to someone who is available does that make sense so sometimes when we make ourselves super available to a person who's unavailable they get this same feeling then they start convincing themselves that we are not as attractive or whatever this that the other we, they come up with a million excuses and so but it's harder to see it in yourself and if you're someone who goes after unavailable pe uh, people it kind of protects you from having to see how you're unavailable yourself and so what i'm trying to say is that there could there's a subconscious unavailability that is surprising because we're so used to someone else being unavailable if we are used to people that are you know gonna hurt us essentially people that are unavailable like someone else in our childhood or someone else we've experienced in our life so anyways we're gonna now be looking at what you don't see about this person so we have the horse and so this person definitely could have um some earth in their chart so capricorn virgo or taurus especially taurus with the higher font coming out we have the sun with spirit and that's leo energy which is the sun energy is the quintessential masculine energy and it's the energy of i am and so it was interesting to me that this comes out because fear that the light will bring judgment what you don't see about this person is that they are the light and they let me put them all down so we have journey we also have mercury and sagittarius so they could have sagittarius in their chart or they could have some other fire in their chart as well we have everything you need to soon and sitting on top of the world so I'm realizing a part of the reason. So by the way, when I pull these cards, I don't like fully look at them, but I do sometimes start to get a vibe if I'm not going out of my way to not look at them. Sometimes I like kind of letting the situation sit. So by the time I'm speaking, I already have some thoughts together about it. Um, but for, for what you don't see about them is this incredible explorer energy. And I feel like with the sun here, this card really talks about how there's more to come on the horizon that this person the biggest thing you don't see about them is that they're not done growing yet they're not gonna have those same insecurities forever and their true self is a lot more confident and a lot more spontaneous exploratory expansive and with journey being here it's like this person's on their journey and i thought it was so interesting that journey came out as what you don't see and what you do see is the world so it's like what you do see is maybe that this this person's done kind of done growing but i feel like what's going on here is discovery journey like these are all cards that are saying it's still ongoing that this person is someone that is on their journey and is growing within their leadership abilities this person's a leader essentially and it might be unexpected but this is someone who has an amazing ability to lead and someone who is going to be a very strong leader in their life and i feel like there's a message here of spirit wanting to remind you to give this person a chance and try to see the true nature of them because with everything you have too soon it's like you don't see that potentially the reason why and this is what I was saying is potentially the reason why you don't um, see, the, maybe you don't believe, sometimes you may get pessimistic or sometimes you may not have as an optimistic of a view about what this relationship with this person could be or how this person's trajectory is going. But with sitting on top of the world, this this card reminds you that 
there are always times when we're not sitting on top of the world and then there are times when, when you are and so i feel like this is saying that just because this person may go through lulls or may may have certain things to work through it doesn't mean that they're not going to be sitting on top of the world it doesn't mean they don't have that ability because what spirit's telling me is that they have an incredible ability to lead they have an incredible ability to get the job done so even if this person is slower or they might move a little bit slower they are free and so a big thing that's coming through that you don't see about them is they're less rooted than your perception they're actually freedom is very important to them and exploring is very important to them and that's like a part of their core soul frequency and so maybe they even have certain certain masks that they've learned from childhood to be more feminine or to be more cooperative maybe that's something they had to do in order to survive essentially or to please certain parents things like that but the once this person learns to drop those masks what's underneath that is incredible growth um potential to lead potential to inspire and with sitting on top of the world i mean it's just like it doesn't get better than that like i just feel like this is such an expansive energy here and it's not quiet either it's not someone that holds back it's someone that speaks their truth the sun is all about standing in your truth and radiating who you are like the sun for me is i am and it's the masculine principle it's it does things it it it's authentic it shines out their light and so i feel like it's important that you don't overlook this person that's what i'm getting um i need another sip of water and i'm also getting that there's more to discover about them there's more to come And it's so with the other part of the reading, it, it felt like this, you saw this as someone who, whose main goal was to kind of lay low or to just be comfortable, right? So I feel like there's this perception that they just want to be comfortable or they want to avoid confrontation, things like that. But I'm kind of, I'm getting more that this is someone who is actually just really steady and when it comes to, and I was just doing a lot of research yesterday for the fun of it about mature masculine energy. A lot of us are used to immature masculine energy, which can be arrogant, avoidant, um, aggressive. Um, what else? It can be even violent. It can be like not receptive like not compassionate essentially but the 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 most evolved masculine form is someone that's integrated their compassion and the masculine is really meant to serve as a solid base that's what it's supposed to be it's supposed to be humble it's supposed it's supposed it should when it's in its mass in its highest form it's humble it's compassionate it's reliable it commits it isn't a it isn't afraid of taking responsibility it isn't avoidant it doesn't run right like it doesn't run away from supporting and protecting the feminine essentially and this is someone that absolutely can do that and i think sometimes when we're used to masculine showing up in a more underdeveloped way we might think this kind of masculine energy is not masculine or something but it is, you know, and I think sometimes a more mature masculine could be mistaken for a feminine energy, but that's not true. It, the, the masculine energy, imagine like the, the good dad, you know what I mean? Like a, a really great dad. Who do you imagine being an amazing father? It's not the person who hasn't responded to you, you know, in, it's not the person that ghosts you. It's not the person that makes you guess what they are feeling, guess what they want. This is, the mature masculine is someone who knows exactly what they want and they're reliable to they're reliable so it's someone who gets the job done it's not someone who fronts with confidence it's someone who has a silent strength to them and has has resilience right 
And so this is someone who has that is all I'm is all I'm getting. And so if this is resonating for you. I feel like it's a little bit of a wake up call as well, just to make sure that you aren't letting your own wounds get in the way that you're seeing this person. The way that you're valuing them. Which is not easy. And I have I have empathy. I still work on this. Trust me. Um, but I think I think that's what's coming through in this file. And also things that are triggering for a masculine energy are criticism, trying to control them or shutting out, shutting them out. So if you, if you're showing up in a way, like I'm not saying you are, but like we've all done this is what I'm saying is even a mature masculine can turn immature. If you are criticizing them, if you're trying to control them, if you're being demanding, if you're not opening up to them, if you are closing them off from giving to you then they can't do what they're meant to do you know and so it's important to understand how our own energy can influence another's you know and so it's the same with vice versa like when there's a more immature masculine energy approaching a feminine they can there's a risk of taking a higher vibrational feminine to a lower vibrational feminine where they um or not even lower vibrational, it, it can even put them in their masculine energy. So sometimes when, sometimes when us, or I don't want to say us, I mean, you guys can identify with whatever energy, it's not related to gender, but a lot of us have an idea of what our core energy is. But a lot of times we are taken out of our core energy when the other energy isn't doing its job so we let's say someone is making you feel unsafe or misunderstood that's a trigger for the feminine then you might go into your masculine energy i know i do and i work on that you know what i mean i work on having boundaries rather than getting triggered and going into going into lower vibrational masculine energy where in the past i and i don't want to make this about me i just am giving you examples um but i feel like i would be the kind of person to kind of get fired up or feel like i have to protect myself and like I don't know all that stuff and, and i feel like sometimes it, a mature masculine might even go into their into a lesser confident female energy sometimes which is what we were seeing in the beginning in part a like it was coming through with the octopus as lower vibrational feminine energy which is oftentimes very confused doesn't have direction doesn't have boundaries doesn't know what they want in life like he's just looking for security like is looking for confidence from other people like those are all the things i described but I i'm getting that this is someone who's maybe been triggered a lot into their feminine energy but they are a core masculine i hope that makes sense and you might relate to that you might be someone who gets confused about are you more masculine or are you more feminine and sometimes it's because you might be more feminine but you haven't had the conditions present for you to sit in it because you have to feel safe you have to feel understood and if you're not then you can't sit in that because i don't know that's just the way it works i guess so let's get some tarot now so for pile number one what are they not seeing about their person oh and a song i was hearing it was funny and i don't even know the name of it but i hear it on the radio sometimes and it's like, I'm still out here getting cuter. It's like a rap song and it's like, he's kind of making fun of people who peaked in high school. Like you just peaked in high school. I'm still out here getting cuter. This is this person. Like they didn't peak in high school. There's, they haven't peaked yet is what Spirit's saying. All right, let's get some more. So what is pal number one maybe not seeing about their person or doubting? Let's say even doubting. We have the three of swords. We have the Ten of Pentacles. We have the Fool. We have the Knight of Swords. What is found number one doubting about their person? Not seeing. We have the Eight of of swords we have the lovers in the tower okay i have to get some gotta block out some of these images for youtube's sake okay let's get that all right okay i'm gonna 
sip of water, then we'll get into it. Okay. I'm seeing here with the Knight of Swords that you may be jumping to conclusions about where this relationship can go, essentially. Um, you may not be seeing that a part of you. Okay, so what I'm seeing is you guys may feel like most relationships are going to fail or there could be a with the three of swords here, there could be an assumption that you're going to get your heart broken anyways. And this could be really subconscious. So even if some of you guys are like, oh, no, I don't think that like, I think I'm the one that is in more in control in this situation. We also have the six of cups at the back of the deck. Um, you may be subconsciously protecting yourself because it's like when you let someone in, if you really let yourself care about someone that and, and let that letting that be reciprocal with the lovers here that's scary and so it, we know it's going to hurt 20 times more if we actually trusted the person if we actually if we actually let ourselves be held by them if we let ourselves be loved um we know it's going to hurt even more if that person did hurt us and so there could be a part of you that's wanting to jump to conclusions as to why it won't work. Because with the tower here as well, I'm seeing it's like, yeah, and I, yeah, I'm getting with the, the, this is more speaking to your energy now. It's like with the um, eight of swords. Wait, let me just think about this for a second. They're not seeing. I'm getting two messages. So one of them is you guys may feel like you'd be trapped in a relationship with this person or you might feel like there wouldn't be opportunities for like exploration or you might even feel that. I feel like what Spirit's saying, you don't see that you can still go on adventures and be in this like fresh energy with another person you know this ten of pentacles maybe settling down deep down scares you as well it's not going to trap you is what i'm getting you might even be afraid of breaking this person's heart i'm just getting a lot of things so maybe it's one or one or the other but there could just be a part of you that feels like either you're gonna you're you're not gonna be able to follow through on your promises so you already want to sabotage it or you might feel or and both and or both you might fluctuate or you might sub you might subconsciously tell yourself that you don't want this ten of pentacles even though maybe you do maybe you're used to a lot of upheaval maybe you're used to a lack of love in relationships because this is a soulmate relationship here page of cups like this is a relationship that it's a soulmate relationship where it's actually based in friendship and, and true genuine love, not lust, not ulterior motive. Not It's not rooted in pain. And so sometimes we can start trying to control the future or we can feel like the only way to feel alive or to feel free is to cause these tower moments. You might even crave a tower moment. But I think what Spirit's saying is this, what you don't see about this person maybe is actually has a lot more to do with you than them. What you don't see is maybe you're projecting some of your fears onto character traits of theirs or reasons why it wouldn't work. But it's about not jumping to conclusions here. Um, why is the Nine of Swords? Let's just clarify though. Why is the Nine of Swords here? Nine of Swords, yes. Not expecting the worst, essentially. It's about getting out of your head and yeah it's about not assuming for the worst so that's just a clarification um i just want to clarify why is the eight of swords here yeah there's something here where it's almost like you may feel like 
letting yourself be in a grounded rooted relationship would make it so you're stuck you can't move like you can't travel you can't progress there won't be any passion or something like that but that's like not necessarily true i think and like if it is it's like, why would you pick the worst outcome? What I'm getting is there's one option where, let's say there's an outcome where you give it a chance. We don't know. That's the unknown. So yeah, there could also be a fear of the unknown because it's not familiar. It's different from what you are expecting. And so because of that, there's fear of the unknown. And so sometimes we just want it to turn out in a way that is familiar yet bad, yet painful. It's almost like we just want the pain to happen sooner so we can get it over with. But what if it doesn't end up turning into that? You know, so it's like it's about not sabotaging this and projecting or uh, pre making predictions that are fear-based right and in living more in the moment allowing yourself to do that why is the fool here we have the world i got i'm gonna cover everything you guys just be careful yeah there's a part of you that almost may even feel like you're not ready to settle down or there could even be a feeling of like, is this it? Like, is this, is this going to be boring? Is this just the end then? And spirits saying, no, what you don't see is there's more adventures to come that you can, you can explore the world. It's not just an ending of a chapter. It's, it's a celebration and there's more to grow off of from there. And I think you guys may really love, be everyone would it's just about getting through these triggers for you guys pile number one why is the three of swords here we have the eight of pentacles yeah and a part of you and like with the eight of pentacles being here it could be like the recognition that relationships do just take work and it requires building up your skills and putting in a lot of constant effort um, so that is a part of it, right? But that isn't something, it's not going to be a quick result, you know? But I feel like with the Three of Swords, sometimes we can, as a way of escaping our problems or not wanting to work through certain challenges with a person or not wanting to face certain parts of ourselves, we can just opt for heartbreak. We can opt for breaking someone else's heart or we can opt for having our heart even broken. Um, and I'm sure you guys know, like, you've probably had other people be afraid of doing the work that's required being afraid of all of that because it feels triggering it feels maybe boring less exciting but it's what builds this ten of pentacles and i think the ten of pentacles is something that requires this steady force that we have under these cards in order to build with and so yeah and i and i think it's worth asking yourself if you're not ready for this that's okay but i think it's important to be honest about the reason why you can't do it rather than and, and you know that we've all felt like other people have blamed us or made us feel like we weren't enough right and it's like i'm just telling you, this isn't a situation where this person isn't enough or that they can't grow with you you know and it's it's about realizing that we all have flaws and i'm sure i'm sure like you're still working on some of them and sometimes when we dislike an energy in someone else it could even be an, a secret energy of our own and so i'm wondering if for you guys you might be seeing what you see sometimes in yourself with this person like you might be projecting a little bit like with the octopus maybe you've gone through time periods where um you have overgiven or just like gotten involved in other people's things maybe you guys were afraid of showing your light all these things that you find kind of unattractive right but it's about having compassion. The more compassion you have for yourself, the more compassion you can have for others when you do. And it's not to say that this person doesn't have some of those traits, but it's about recognizing that if that's something we don't like and we know we also have in ourselves, that's like no, that's an invitation for more self-compassion and more self-love. It always is when we find something super unattractive or like unacceptable in another person. It's usually something that we don't accept for ourselves as well. So um I know this is coming off like I'm not trying to 
make this a really difficult message because I actually like I just want you guys to know for reference I resonate a lot with this message um or like I know what this is like and I just also want to encourage you and say like you're on your way especially if this is someone you have in your life that's a sign that you have been doing the work that you have been opening up but it's about realizing that just getting contact to someone who wouldn't break your heart or someone that you've been looking for that's when the journey begins right and then it's still going to be hard you know it's like you're not going backwards if more challenges are coming up or if it's more triggering than you'd expected it to be it doesn't mean that it's wrong it doesn't mean that it's not for you it could just mean that you maybe expected it to be different or maybe i don't know maybe you expected you to not feel that way anymore or like maybe there's also wounds that never had the chance to come up before and so all of this means you're growing. All this means you're progressing and that you're on the right path. And so your best shot, I think, is sticking with this, you know, sticking with these triggers and not making any rash decisions, right? Um, I want to get a guidance card for you. And then we're, we are going to do an extended reading. We're going to be looking at what this person would want to tell you, what they want you to know. We're going to be looking at where this connection could go if you continue investing energy in it. And then we'll finish off with a little bit of more guidance, um, a little more extensive guidance than what we're going to do here. But I do want to get you, I do want to get you some guidance here before we move on. If I can find the deck that I want. Oh, I see it. I want to. I want to get the surrender cards. I just feel like this is a surrender pile, which I say with love. And we all we all need a little more surrender in our lives. Sorry, <laughs> this is just my desk is honestly not the most clean right now. So okay. So for pile number one, what advice do you have for them to surrender when it comes to this connection? We have surrender to complete healing. Yes, surrender to receiving support and love. If that isn't it, I don't know what is. And so surrender to complete healing, though, that's what I was kind of talking about is I don't doubt that you guys have already been on a self-love journey or a healing journey, but surrender to complete healing. It says open fully to the loving, compassionate forces of the universe that support your physical, emotional, and spiritual healing. And so sometimes when we're on a journey, it's like you've probably been through a lot in the past. Like, and I totally respect that. And I just want to encourage you so you can further bring more joy, love, and happiness in your life. But sometimes it's hard to complete. Like, obviously, I don't think complete healing is a thing. But I think sometimes we can hold ourselves back from, from letting go of certain pain because it's almost like it, that makes us who we are. It's familiar to us. And it's a little bit of a death, even though it's a good death because it feels better on the other side. Nonetheless, it's still difficult to let go of sometimes. And so there could be a feeling of wanting to hold on to a past version of yourself, maybe, that wasn't able to receive support and love, that went after unavailable people, that has had their heart broken a lot, has, been, has felt unworthy. And I think surrender to complete healing is... is is keep going you know even if you've already done a lot of work it's like realizing there might be still just tiny pieces left over that you're coveting because they remind you of who you've been up until this point so with sur uh, surrender to re receiving support and love that's truly what i was getting here as well so it says allow the love and support of others in rather than trying to handle everything yourself this can take the pressure off and simultaneously nurture you yeah and so if you feel like you're dealing with a lot of this alone by the way i feel like this is a person you could really talk to um, and I just think it's hard to, to receive support in love if you're not used to it, you know? That was kind of what I was going on about. What else? Let's finish out this reading for pile number one. We have surrender stubbornness. If you're tensing up or taking a rigid stance about something, gently observe yourself and become more yielding. This will help you communicate more lovingly with yourself and others. Yeah, and also surrender attachment to results. So with stubbornness, taking a rigid stance about something and tensing up, like there could be this, you may be feeling like things have to be a certain way or if they are a certain way, that's not going to be okay with you. But the more that you can release essentially 
things that no longer serve you. It's like character traits that maybe protected you in your past but aren't needed anymore is what I'm getting. And so surrender your attachment to results. The formula for success is to do all you can to make things happen then let go of the result. Holding on too tightly to a desired outcome can sabotage it. And so I and I agree with that. And so I, I feel like with this situation, try not to be so worried about how this dynamic is, is going to end up because that might just be putting a lot of pressure and stress on you that is not is is blocking you from receiving support and love things like that so anyways i'm going to take it now into the extended if you guys want to join me i will have it linked underneath the timestamps. um other than that i hope you enjoyed the reading if you did please hit the like button leave a comment if you want to support the channel um subscribe if you want to see more of more pick a card readings from this channel i would love to have you and i hope you have a great rest of your day Hello, pile number two. If you chose the Urban Crow Oracle with this black tourmaline crystal, this is going to be your reading where we're looking at what you don't see about this person or a person that's significant in your life. So we're really meant to be looking at the hidden truth of this person. What do you miss about them or how do you misinterpret them is another way of looking at this reading. So we're going to start off with an energy check-in and this is going to be to give me more background information and to give you more of a complex explanation by seeing what you do see about this person. So we are going to start off, um, I want it to be a little bit shorter because the title is obviously what you don't see, but in order to get there to make sure you found the right pile, we are going to be looking at what you do predominantly see about this person. So it helps me also see um, if there is a bias or what what the bias is and because sometimes it's not to say that what you see about them isn't also real it's just that sometimes when we because people are so complex and nuanced sometimes we have a hard time seeing how someone could be this way but then also another way and so this reading is meant to give you some insight into what you don't expect or what you don't understand about this person like what are you missing about them so there will be an extended reading as well where we're going to be looking at what this person would want to say to you, what they wish you knew, what they want to tell you. We're going to be looking at where this connection is headed. So if you continue to put energy into this connection, where might it go from here? And then we'll be looking at any advice for you around any blockages that you might want to know about in regards to this connection or anything else spirit really wants you to know. So yeah okay let's get in though so we're gonna pull this card i'm not gonna look at it until the end i'm gonna read it to you at the end so this is gonna be um hopefully give us a really rooted message and what is the main thing that you perhaps don't see about this person so spirit what does pile number two not see about their person okay we have this one so um i'm gonna try to remember i forgot for pile number one to read it but i inserted it anyways um but I will try to remember to read this at the end so I don't have to insert it in. I just get so into what I'm doing that I forget something like that. So, okay. Let me get this in a better position. So let me show you what I got for how you do see this person. So we have the elephant. So we have fire signs. Um, we have Sagittarius, Leo, and Aries. Um, so you may see the more... Um, fiery side of this person. We also have the Six of Wands with Sagittarius. Again, more fire energy. Um, this also represents the Six of Wands. And so already here with the Elephant and Sagittarius, there's a lot of themes around the ninth house here, which is also ruled by the Wheel of Fortune. So this could be someone that you view as someone who's just lucky. Like you may feel like this person just has this sort of uncanny ability to navigate life in a way that is sort of miraculous like it's almost like they have a this quality to themselves where there's this certain confidence or positivity or optimism that allows them to breeze past obstacles that others wouldn't or it may be that there's certain blockages that you've seen this person get past that make you see them in a way that's like it's almost like, how did they do that? Like a maverick energy or an energy of, I did not expect that to be the outcome of this. But, and with the Wheel of Fortune, that's 
in the positive, it's something that you can't really control anyways, but something that ends up being in your favor, right? It's like a certain change or it's about destiny and it's about how sometimes there are things we can't even control that go bad and some things we can't control that go right. This you, this is someone you feel like is on usually is oftentimes on the the positive end of that. So we also have we have Moon in Libra with companionship. Oh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to censor this companionship. And then we also have um, Virgo in Moon in Virgo, and then we have the one who needs to control as well. So. Just gonna go like this. Mm. Okay. So what I'm picking up here is that you feel like this person doesn't really have rhyme or reason to certain decisions that they make. Like this could be someone that if you first met them, you might think that there's like a foolish energy or you might think that they don't plan enough um, because the one that needs to control and with order here with Moon and Virgo, these energies are very practical. Um, this is not the way that you see them. It's just giving me information. It's that it's telling me that this is what you almost compare them to. It's almost like there's certain people that put so much effort into maintaining some kind of an order or having some kind of a process that is logical that is tended to essentially it's like it's a very goal-oriented energy that is maybe a reason why this energy seems more strange to you it's like you see this person as someone who is easygoing kind of you know is cooperative in their style yet is someone that manages to be successful even though they may not always be calculated. It's like you see this person as not being very calculated, yet someone that's successful and someone that seems to be very fortunate. And it's interesting because it's like a lot of people have the mentality where they feel like they need to, it's a more masculine energy, I would say. But it's not to say this person doesn't have their own masculine energy. It's just like the kind of masculine energy that, and Virgo is is feminine, but it's it's a sort of planning, nitpicky, critical energy where everything needs to go according to plan, perfectionism even. It's like you don't, they feel like you, no, sorry, you feel like they manage to be successful and even when blockages do come up where some people would be like see this is exactly what I prepared against the elephant is all about the remover of obstacles and this you feel like this person has this interesting way of using obstacles to their advantage it's like if there's an obstacle it usually leads them to something better and it's like they you feel like this person has this not trying that hard yet yet successful energy to them whereas maybe you're more used to people being very regimented or always being on the outlook for the worst case scenario or always making sure that they're doing damage control things like that and this the one who needs to control card really talks about essentially what what the energy i'm getting over here is that sometimes our plans everything shifts it's like we can only control so much essentially and so the wheel of fortune card is always a reminder that no matter how much willpower we put into something and like to me i'm thinking of the chariot no matter how much we plan and you know learn and we prepare for things it's like still at the end of the day we are all at the mercy of fate and just like what the what's going on in the universe you know none of us can control that or be exempt for it from it and so but a lot of us anyways try to do our best and, and I think to some degree it makes a lot of sense to like for example it's a good idea to to have an exercise routine to fight off disease and make sure your body is mobile throughout your life like that's a moment where it's like it would be good to do that rather than to not make that a priority and then deal with problems later on it's it's that there is a benefit to this energy it's just that 
you may feel that this person is oddly almost seems like they they don't get too down about something going wrong they just like respond to it in a way that is very auspicious it's kind of mysterious and it is something that's hard to replicate it's like it doesn't really make sense to you in a way um, but it is impressive nonetheless because six of wands that's about confidence it's like you wonder how does this person have this confidence when they aren't maybe like they didn't even it's like they might not have their credentials yet they're intelligent and like they know what to do in situations so to me it's coming off as more intuitive but also just open-minded right you see this person is very open-minded and it's like and Sagittarius is that way it's like it's not that they're looking for some sort of result in general it's just that they're they're there for the journey, right? So you, they, you see this person as very process oriented, whereas a lot of other people can be very results oriented. And, but you, they, you also feel like they do end up getting results that seemed like what they wanted without really trying. It's just like they did it by being expansive and not really having a clearly defined goal in hand with every situation. Um, whereas sometimes people are like very aware why they'd be interacting in a certain situation you feel like they have a very free spirited. It's not that there isn't direction though. That's what's interesting. It's like you, you view this as someone who seems to have direction, but to what you almost don't understand. And you might even think that this person doesn't even know, but somehow it works out. And it's kind of this like bizarre sort of thing. You also probably see this person as like someone who's friendly, like goes with the flow, like it kind of responds to the energy in the way that you know, like it, it's this this energy here of wanting to create balance in situations. And you may even feel like they can be around sometimes more of these controlling people, yet they seem to either make harmony with them or they, they find a way to just not succumb to this need to control and control everything and make sure there's an order or rhyme or rhythm to everything. So that's what I'm getting overall. I don't want to ramble on for too long about that. Um, for some of you, I just want to say this might be a reverse pile. Um, where if this sounds more like how you think a certain person views you, may, it might be reversed. But sometimes I like listening to reverse files because it's interesting to hear it that way. But again, this could just also be your person. So uh, I'm just going to pull a, full, a few tarot cards just to see how else you view them. What stands out? We have six of cups. What stands out most to pile number two about their person? The Knight of Cups. So you view this as someone who's very um, compassionate, someone who seems to move with their emotions. You view this person as someone who, who um, lets their heart guide them and brings a very kind, friendship, childlike, even almost charm and love to situations. And you feel like this is someone who is able to be lighthearted in this way because they don't, they aren't so stressed about, they, you see them as someone who does things for the sake of doing them. And because of that, with companionship, you may view this as someone who has a lot of soulmate friends or has a lot of friendships that are meaningful. This is someone who definitely is the kind of person to have a heartfelt love for people. Someone that, um, sees the best in people and develops really meaningful relationships with others. One more, please. Five of cups also. So yeah, it's like queen of cups at the back of the deck. Yeah. So for a lot of you, you guys, this is definitely going to be in the eight of cups, page of cups. Are you kidding me? Two of cups, the empress. Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, so I think for some of you, this is probably a reverse pile, but anyways, sometimes it could be interesting. But what I'm seeing is you view this person as some, I'm hearing like I've loved and I've lost, you know, it's like you view this as someone who has had to walk away from situations that didn't end up being the end result that, sorry, now I'm speaking to you. So I just want to keep it consistent. So I'm going to, again, like regardless of whether or not you feel like this is a reverse pile, um, I'm just going to speak about it as if we're describing I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But anyways, I'm going to still say it as if this is the person you are asking about, even if it's you. So, so many cups energies. Can you believe energy coming out here? So this, you feel like this person moves with their heart and manages to get disappointed 
but still maintains this lightness of heart. And we also have Leo, um, Sun and Leo at the back of the deck with fortune. So it's like, regardless of having maybe been dissatisfied or hurt by putting their emotions out there, you feel like there's someone that just naturally pivots then and moves forward and continues to hold this loving energy, continues to hold this open heart energy. You view this as someone who's very relationship oriented. Um, yeah, with the Empress here as well. Um, someone who's very Venusian and it's like, let's say that something doesn't end up the way that this person thought it was. They just forgive and move on. You know, it's like they're very forgiving, compassionate. They don't get vengeful. They just kind of let it go and, and continue to be the same way that they are. And I think this is someone who's just a really good friend to people or that's the way you see them. You see this lighthearted energy as well. And so, yeah, I can't even believe how many cups energy we have out here. So there could be Scorpio, Cancer or Pisces in their chart. So anyways, this is what I'm getting for the energy check-in. Now let's take it to what you don't see about this person. Let me get a sip of water. That's good. Okay. And with the Eight of Cups, it's like, it's just this, it's a, it's a surrender card as well. So it's like, you view this as someone who just surrenders to a situation that isn't going to work out and then just moves forward, just goes on their journey, right? The Sagittarius energy that it's like, well, I wasn't really so focused on the outcome that I'm not going to like cause a fit and try to get everyone to, you know, you see them as someone who surrenders if it doesn't work out, but still, still wanted something. So it's like they see, you see them as someone who gets emotionally invested in things, but doesn't really try to control it or like make sure it happens. You know, it's kind of like a trust in the universe. I feel like you see that this person has. So we're going to look at what is more hidden about this person, what you don't see about them as much. So we have the moth here. We have the Four of Cups with um, 12th House and Escape. We have the Empress with Venus and Love. We have um, Sun in Scorpio. We have Sun in Libra. And then so we also have someone soon here. Okay, and so what I'm really seeing as the main thing coming through as what you don't see about them, it's on it's honestly kind of like the flip side of what you've what you you do see this person and I do feel like everything we were talking about was true, but it's almost like you don't see where this kind of energy can can kind of hold this person back. And so you're kind of you're going to kind of get a sobering perspective on maybe how some of these traits um, why this, how this person can, can come off that way because it seems really effortless or it seems like kind of magical or just like, it, it's something that could be almost too good to be true or something like that because there is actually, it is a little bit too good to be true the way that you're viewing them because there is some caveats to being the way that they are. And so one of these things that you don't see about them is, when they are, it, what's core to them being more process and oriented or a little bit more neither here nor there, it's like they'll kind of just move forward or move on and be less attached is because sometimes, and this could be like a past energy of this person. I mean, it's take it as it resonates, but this is what you may, since knowing this person, this is what you maybe didn't see as clearly is that they had a tendency to escape through relationships and and they had a tendency to instead of dealing with all of their their negative like whatever their shadow is there there are certain difficulties that this person would experience in life that only they could work through and that's why I feel like Sun and Scorpio is here is that there's a certain endurance required to face your situation for what it is and not try to escape but what you don't see about this person is that they do act, they have had a tendency in their life to deal with more difficult emotions, more difficult 
situations in life that maybe require more more um honest approach or like maybe it requires therapy or maybe if there's an issue in this person's life that's practical it might require like practical uh movements right because this person doesn't always want to do that sometimes instead they can get in this mentality of fantasizing or idealizing about an escape route this person has a tendency to want to escape situations that are not harmonious or in moments when they're struggling in life instead of wanting to endure it and get to the root of it and say like like here's an example I could give from like my own life is um when I graduated from college like it was very uncomfortable for me because I feel like my identity at that time was being a student and so I had a very clear sense of identity but I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life at that time and like that was a very I didn't really want to sit through that discomfort and trust that, you know, if I keep kind of exploring different things or if, if I that it would come to me essentially. But because that was uncomfortable, I was looking for an escape from that. And I just wanted to jump into something else and try to make that into what I wanted, even though it wasn't really real. It was like I kind of would create like a fantasy of like how my life would go if I just did that to escape how I was really feeling about my purpose in life at that time. And so this is the energy I'm kind of getting in different scenarios is like instead of seeking like harmony within, it's like this person has a tendency to put other things on a pedestal or see certain things with rose tinted glasses and almost imagine that that's what's going to save them or that's what's going to make everything feel better and so instead of sitting in the darkness instead of sitting in this shadow here it's like a moth drawn to a flame it's like they're looking to the grass is greener on the other side and so they're they're prone to to fantasy and thinking that all of their problems could be solved or that they won't have to endure the discomfort of it they're looking for a shortcut almost this person had a tendency to look for a shortcut so if they and and for you it, and that can be because of a lack of purpose also and so um what this really talks about is instead of getting to know themselves better and wanting to refine like their truth and what they want or what they want to do instead to escape they would start to see whatever um they'd like to shine a light they like to put the solution on something outside of themselves and that could be a person and then they could romanticize that person or sort of see them as the solution the thing that's going to save them um and again with the so it's interesting that we have the empress in venus and i do feel like this person has a lot of venusian energy to them and we also had Neptune. I pulled it because it came, it was in the at the back of the the deck. So this person has a tendency to believe that um, their healing or their happiness can be found in sacrificing their own, like sacrificing getting to know themselves. It's like they think that if they, it's like idolizing something. It's like they want to idolize something. And put all their efforts towards that almost in sort of a more codependent way. And then hope that that person has the key that they need for their, for, for to solve that discomfort essentially. And so because that isn't true, obviously, you know, that that's an illusion. And so the four of cups here and the 12th house escape, it's like the 12th house is a Pisces. It's, it, it, there's a very Pisces energy to how this person escapes. It's like, instead of in that also rules over addictions and things like that so I feel like this is someone who could get like addicted to a person or an idea thinking that if they just get that then they'll be happy and as a way of avoiding taking responsibility for their life and what they what they need to look at within themselves what what they need to figure out essentially because Scorpio is all about renewal and death and it's a difficult process, right? It's something that, so it's like whenever there's a situation where this person is going through maybe difficult emotions that come along with change or death or not literal death, but like, let's say death of a relationship or death of a time period in their life, anything like that. It's like they try to look to relationships, especially with this seven or like harmony card. They feel like if they can 
have a certain kind of a relationship that that's going to fill in for what they need to do through their own death process, what they need to process essentially. And instead of, instead of continuing to focus on their goals. And so I want to, I want to make it clear that this person has a very dreamy and loving nature to themselves that is very authentic. And this card with someone soon is something that acknowledges that like we all deserve to wish upon a star. We deserve to wish for something that's going to make us happy. We deserve to wish for our ideal career. We, we deserve to wish for a certain partner that we want in our lives. But when we are no longer participating fully in the creation of our lives, thinking that that wish fulfillment is, is like and only focusing on the wish fulfillment rather than what's going on right in front of you and just escaping into the this projected future of fantasy or like what what would make you happy then you stop really living your life consciously in that moment and i'm just saying that i think this is someone that had it had or has a tendency to fall into relationships that have a rescue yet like have a rescue cycle to them where this person sometimes wants to be rescued and may use their desire for a certain relationship as a cover up for what they don't want to look at and so it's a flighty energy then as well and so I do think that this is someone that maybe is more intuitive and is more elusive. Like, I just don't think this person is ever going to be the kind of person that is overly planned and in that Virgo energy. Um, actually, maybe this person has a um, Pisces South Node, Virgo North Node, because those are opposites of each other. Yeah, so this is almost their past. Okay, this is what I'm getting. Um, this person is learning to integrate more practicality into their life they're learning to take more practical responsibility for things instead of always being in a Pis piscean energy they're maybe more comfortable in the realm of spirit and elusiveness and like mystical energies and things like that but um i think it is something that tends they tend to not be as present then with their life right and virgo is a very present energy it's dealing with what needs to be dealt with at a very practical level like there's no it's it's like it is not um neptune ruled you know there's very neptunian energy that this person when in balance i think falls back into and so i think one of their challenges and struggles in this life is actually becoming more pra pragmatic um more planned and so it's kind of funny that like you see that they maybe aren't that way and then maybe certain things do work out for them and you might just be thinking that you might be missing that they had to learn some hard lessons about this energy. So I think this person has had to learn that the grass, you can't just think the grass is greener on the other side because you're going to get there and then you're still going to have your own troubles and you're still going to have everything you were trying to run away from. It's just an illusion that you could escape to it. And I think sometimes this person has a tendency to, to romanticize life or romanticize love to a point where maybe a relationship or a person could become more important than their own goals, things like that. Um, and this person, and so I, what I was saying with this card is with someone soon, this card really talks about how even the most like independent and stoic people can get lonely. And it's a good thing to put it out to the universe of what you want. But then the card specifically says, but continue to work on your own goals while you do that. So don't focus on that. And so I think they do sometimes get goals that they really want to happen, but it, it, they aren't the kind of goals that are practical. It's more like goals within relationships or like love or like very fantastical fantasy type things. So you might view them as not really having a certain goal in mind, but sometimes they have had that only to get to the other side, like let's say the moth is drawn to the flame, um, they realize that they may have been drawn to this beautiful fantasy, but you know, that was, it's not really where their happiness is to be found. And it's gonna become dark again. And so this person is meant to learn how to see in the dark, right? And is meant to not look for escape, not look for a distraction essentially. And so this person, has had to learn that or they are learning that and they're learning to not always be in this venus energy even though 
it's beautiful. It's that sometimes we need Mars energy, right? Like sometimes we need to think of ourselves and we need to defend and protect ourselves. And so this is someone who would potentially sacrifice their boundaries or sacrifice their own goals or what's true to them. What's true to their sun energy is what I'm getting. Um, they will sac they will bargain with their true goals, aspirations, um, boundaries, things like that in the hopes. And it's kind of becomes a devil energy then because it's like they think if they do that, they think something else could be worth doing that for. And I think the reason why the sun in Scorpio and the sun in Libra is here is whenever this person isn't willing to engage in that Scorpio energy, they aren't willing to go into the darkness and go into the underworld and face what's there. They try to escape and they try to use relationships to give them a sense of purpose or give them, it's like this energy of waiting for someone else to tell them what to do or to fulfill their needs. And that's that four of cups energy here. And this person is ha has had to realize throughout their life and or a lesson I think they're learning in this life is that they have to be more of an active participant. They have to be get more grounded and get more practical and engage in some more clear thinking. And it's interesting that we do have the um, air sign here, but it's the moth card. And so what that tells me is that this person can be prone to using their their um, intellectual energy in a way that actually causes more confusion or like they might obsess over something or try to overanalyze something. That's not even the point of like, it's like a way, then they're just um, focusing on someone else then, right? It's like, then they're not, they'd rather focus on someone else and something else than taking their sword to their own darkness, their own blockages, like their own uncomfortable emotions. And so that is what I'm getting here. I want to see if there's anything else that maybe you don't see. I think this person's been on a journey with endurance here to not shy away from their eighth house energy. It's like they they at first didn't approach their eighth house energy correctly. And eighth house also has to do with power, power dynamics. And so I want with Harmony and Libra, I wonder if this person, like they may even have like a fawning a uh, sort of trauma response where they just want to bring harmony or something like that, or they just want to make things look beautiful or they just want to flatter others or things like that um, to not have to deal with the power struggle. But I think what this person is has had to learn or is going to have to learn in this life is that they have to deal with their own eighth, eighth house. It's the things that are uncomfortable to look at, the things that we avoid the most that we don't like about ourselves um, that are the hardest to look at, but then that's also the place where the most transformation and rebirth occurs. And so, yeah, that's what I'm getting. And so maybe you guys missed this part of the journey or you didn't, weren't able to like, under, like it would make sense. It's like, you maybe just saw, um, the way that this person was, and you might've just thought they're very like friendly or easygoing. And maybe that they just don't take, they're just like, don't feel like they need to control anything, but in order to get to where they are now, if you're seeing them on a more successful trajectory, it's been them having to learn the hard lesson that they have to get in the driver's seat of their life and they have to sometimes be in their Mars energy. They have to make decisions for themselves. You know, they can't just go with the flow forever um, to deal with things. And so that's something that they've had to learn or are learning. And the results you're seeing from that lesson are what is showing you this sort of elephant energy or this blocker of obstacles. Um, the reason why you might even see that too is because this person, when they weren't, when they aren't, when they're trying to escape, they're drawn to things that aren't in alignment with them. And so they're automatically blockages. And so what the Ganesh or the, the elephant card talks about is how sometimes we put, sometimes obstacles are put in our life to steer us in the right direction. And so you might, might've even met this person when they were on the wrong path. And so all the blockages were something that when they surrendered to them and moved on, of course, things got better for them because they were then living in their truth, if that makes sense. And so there might've been an illusion that, that they, I don't know, or like super lucky or something, or like you might've expected. It's like this. It's like when there's blockages in our life, 
it's because like rejection is divine protection. And so when we finally surrender to those and pivot, oftentimes things get a lot better for us, right? It's like, I feel like there's, it, there's a situation like this with this person where they have had to transform. They have had to become more disciplined. They have had to be more in their Mars energy. They have had to get more control of their life actually. And so, um, so you're almost like if this person like doesn't take control or like doesn't do any of that, how do they end up in the right direction? It's that that's actually not the case. It's more that they've through finally taking control of their eighth house, they started to make better decisions for themselves that ended up leading them to more abundance. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense. But you, you maybe don't see the the struggle that this person was had been going through in the darkness that they had to face. Because again, this person maybe ended up going to face the darkness out of the sight of others. You know, I feel like you might have met this person in a time when they were trying to run away from certain processing that they needed to do. And so it might have come off like they didn't even have that processing to do, but they did. They, they did have that as we all have. And when they finally stop being in that overly going with the flow, just kind of like an approach to life that's a little bit too feminine, I would even say it's almost like not enough masculine energy, not enough protection, not enough direction, not enough goals. Um, that didn't work for this person actually. And it didn't work for a reason. So the blockages were very on point with steering this person in the right direction. And it's not necessarily something that's inherent to them. It's just like the nature of the situation. Okay. Let's get some tarot though. So what does pile number two not see about, um, what, what's harder for pile number two to see about this person or what do they miss? What are they missing about them? We have the ace of wands. We have the eight of wands. We have the king of cups. I'm already getting a message here. We have the Hierophant. We have the Nine of Cups. And the Four of Swords. Yeah, I'm getting this Ten of Swords. So what you don't see about this person is that a lot of their transformation and positive karma and blessings, um, it's not like they got lucky and it happened really quickly. It's reminding me of when people you don't see someone's transformation because it might be done in private and so then you almost didn't realize what they were going through but then so it just looks to everyone else like out of nowhere they just became successful or out of nowhere you know like it's like they didn't have to go through any pain or something like like you you can underestimate the the trials and failures and turbulations of a person's journey once they get become successful. And so I feel like that's something that's common for a lot of like celebrities or people who end up getting in the public eye or just being successful. A lot of times we, it, that's why it's so beneficial to learn about their story. It's like when you learn that um, JK Rowling was really poor and no one believed in Harry Potter or a lot of publishers said no. And like, that was probably a really difficult time for her. But what we do know more about is that she became a huge success. And it's almost like, how on earth did she do that? You know, but it's like they this person had to go through a really intense uh, recuperation time period where they did get more intent in touch with their emotions. And with the Ten of Swords here, it's like that. Yeah, what I'm seeing is what you don't see is that they had to get betrayed, extremely hurt like the process of them overcoming obstacles was not as smooth as maybe you thought like this person I think was really hurt and really had to grapple with some really difficult betrayal and pain and to learn to stand up for themselves and to learn um to know what to invest their energy and they had to learn more they had to learn practical lessons here um and it didn't come from nowhere it's like it was something that it was a hard learned lesson and maybe sometimes you see it as this person like getting everything they want or getting what they wanted as much more quickly or something that just happened you know very quickly but it but it didn't happen that way 
um, this person had to, and with the higher font here, maybe this person even speaks with a therapist or they may, it's like this new beginning or whatever success you're seeing with this person, their renewed sense of passion, it was hard earned. It was something that they had to really work on. Um, and there was a lot of time or a lot of time this person spent grieving and dealing with what they didn't want to deal with when you first met them. Like they had to go through their eighth house and unveil a lot of uncomfortable truths and um, they had to get to know their shadow and only then were they able to make good progress. And so again, it's just realizing that this wasn't, this didn't happen overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day and this person's, this person, the time period, maybe where you've seen them run into an obstacle that maybe you thought would have been much like sometimes it's crazy to see someone who had previously fallen or something bad had happened. It's weird for them to come out of nowhere with like a ton of like success or going in the right direction because it almost gives the illusion that they just did that really quickly. But it's like, no, they actually just surrendered to the obstacle and did a lot of work that was actually really difficult. You know, it wasn't like just this. They're not just lucky, essentially. Um, and I think they've had to refine a lot of their beliefs as well. I'm kind of getting here that they went through an intense process of reestablishing their values and what they believe in and having to maybe even unsubscribe. Maybe this person was prone to spiritual bypassing in the past, but I feel like they had to really understand their values and understand what kind of programming from society they want to believe in it was a whole process for them is what i'm getting for them to realize who they really are they had to deprogram a lot of societal messages a lot of messages maybe from spirituality or religion things like that in order for this new opportunity to be here and it came with also a process of a lot of emotional maturity um they had to become a lot more emotionally mature and so especially if this is someone that you haven't like you haven't really gotten to know intimately with where they're at now, they're actually a lot different. They're not as open hearted anymore is kind of what I'm getting is like they they're actually more in this King of Cups energy rather than the Page of Cups rather than the Knight of Cups. It's like they're not as open with their emotions and they're not as carefree. It's like they they actually have done a lot of work and have learned the consequences of being like that, you know, like they have had a lot of consequences. Um, they're not just like the chosen one, or they're not just someone who gets to evade all pain. It's like, no, there's someone that learned a really difficult lesson through being in this other energy and has had to pull themselves up and do the work that they didn't want to do. And that's what actually brought them the success. You know, it's like, this was work that they were meant that they could have done but instead, I think they ran away from it and then they weren't in alignment with themselves. And then they probably ran into blockage after blockage until they spirit like spirit does that when it's like, no, you need to do this work like you. You can't not do this, not because of punishment, but because within that work lies our purpose. It lies our truest desires. It lies the freedom from our blockages and it it lies within that eighth house that's where our transformation is and on the other side only after passing through your eighth house can you get to your ninth house where for me that's like abundance that's positive that's wheel of fortune and so i feel like there's this skip moment i feel like you saw this person move through the seventh house to the eighth to the ninth but they were dealing with their eighth house actually so i hope that makes sense get a sip of water okay let's see now what card came through for you guys oh my gosh this makes so much sense so we have balance here and so what you don't what you didn't see about this person is that they actually did have to learn how to balance out their energy um and i feel like this is someone who has had to learn how to find a middle point between their feminine their masculine energy so for example it's like Maybe when you met this person, they were much more in their feminine energy where they were more, they were in their being energy. So they would go with the flow, like they didn't feel like they need to influence or control things. Um, but they had to learn a balance between that and then the other energy that came through in the energy check-in, which is the Virgo energy, which is a practical, has a plan, needs, 
there needs to be some level of an attempt at control in order to get your goal, in order to be happy, in order to reach your fullest potential. And so what you don't see about this person is that they actually have learned to balance out their approach to life. Um, they're not still the same person that you think they are. Like they're not that same person, especially if you met, because it feels like you knew this person from when they were more in that energy of just go with the flow or something like that. And no, like they've had, they've had to learn how to not be so extreme on one or the other, you know? But let's read the message just because I, I mean, balance is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just read it. It says, have you ever noticed how even on windy days, crows and other birds can stay perfectly positioned on a thin telephone wire? They seem almost unfazed or unbothered by the wind. When we're in balance, we meet external forces with our internal strength, giving each space to exist in harmony. When balance appears, you may need to call upon your inner strength as an approaching situation may test your ability to stay cool and composed. Just like the wind, it too will make its presence known and then move along. Balance may also appear when your daily schedule could use some reorganizing. <laughs> yes. Are you creating time for yourself or is your day consumed with tasks that drain your energy? So what I'm getting here is in order this person had to learn the lesson that the way to cope with difficult situations or like things that may really test you is not to escape it's to grow within your inner strength it's to work on that inner strength and what you don't see is this person was on a journey to learning that is what i'm getting and it isn't something that came so easy that's what i'm getting it's like maybe because this balance energy really sounds like Kind of how you already saw this person it says they seem almost unfazed or unbothered by the wind and it's like that didn't come naturally that's something that they really had to learn and honestly suffer to learn because i think they dealt with some really challenging relationships or situations that were like that so anyways i'm going to take it down to the extended we're going to again be looking at what this person will want to say to you what they want you to know most then we're going to look at where this connection what's the future of the connection can it go anywhere if you put energy into it like where is this headed and then we're going to get you some advice on this connection um to see what spirit wants you to know and make you aware of any blockages that may currently be a part of this connection so thank you so much for being here i really appreciate it if you found this video helpful i do appreciate if you're able to hit the like button to comment and subscribe if you want to see more videos from this channel so Thank you so much, and I hope to connect with you soon. Hello, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. If you chose the Green Witch's Oracle with this green fluorite crystal, this is going to be your reading, where we're looking at what you don't currently see about your person or a person that's significant in your life. So we are going to be structuring this reading where we're going to start off with what you do see about this person. This is going to give me more background into your perspective and what I should especially highlight and what you don't see. And it's also going to serve as an energy check-in just so you can feel confident that this is your pile because as I'm describing what you do see in this person, it should be something you are consciously aware of. So I'm going to pull one of these cards and we're going to read it at the very end. And before we get in, I do want to let you know that there will be an extended reading. I'm just going to put this in the right spot where we're going to be looking at what your person most wants you to know. Um, we're going to be channeling from their higher self, but also from their um, 3D self. I'll try to differentiate the two. And then we'll be looking at where this connection is currently headed and any advice on that. And then we're going to look at whatever advice in general you might need around this connection, around this person, any blockages or advice for the connection. So if you really feel like this is your reading, I will have it linked down below. But anyways, let's get in. So spirit for pile number three and their person, tune me into this energy, please. What does pile number three not currently see about their person? What are they missing about this person? All right, so we're going to put this in the corner and I will read it at the end. I feel like my voice is a little bit missing right now. I don't know why. Um, 
But anyways, I'm going to pull out the cards. This is for how you currently view your person. So we have the bad with air signs. We have Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. We have Mercury and Leo. We have the Ace of Swords with Air Element Communicating. We have the Four of Cups with 12th House Escape, which is also Pisces. We have No Bull, and also we have Healing. Just make sure everything is where I want it to be. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna get a sip of water and then let's get in. We're gonna be clarifying with Tarot as well. If you guys don't wanna see this part, you can definitely just skip to what you don't see about your person, but I personally enjoy having somewhat of an energy check-in for my reading or when I'm listening to a reading. So I'm seeing that you view this person. What you do see about them is that they have been potentially going through a pretty dark time period in their life. This is someone you view maybe at the very ending. It's like someone who is beginning to look at difficult things to look through the darkness to sit in the darkness and to emerge essentially and with the moon here it's like you see this person as someone who's dealing with a lot of subconscious shadows maybe a lot of blockages and with the four of cups in the 12th house you see this person as someone who has a tendency to not want to or it's not that they always have a tendency to do this, it's that there are certain things you know they've done this with where there's some things that they haven't been wanting to look at. And so it's led to this kind of complacency emotionally in their life where they may have been staying in their comfort zone or they may have been avoiding difficult truths or putting off a healing process. And because of that, it's like they've been in the dark, but you see this as someone who is in the process of healing because we have healing here and then we also have no bull and air element communicating. So ace of swords and no bull for me are a very similar energy. I feel like this is someone you might even be proud of with the Mercury and Leo. Um, I'm getting this energy where you might be proud of this person for the work that they're doing on themselves. You may feel like there's they're going through a turning point in their life where they're finally willing to get clarity on things that they've avoided or they're willing to see the truth of matters and they are no longer seeing with clouded vision. They're no longer looking at things as they want them to be or they're no longer burying their head in the sand and they're actually stepping out into the light to see the truth of certain situations and you feel like this is initiating a process of healing for them. So I'm going to get some tarot now as well to clarify anything else. And you maybe view this as someone who has had a broken heart or has had a lot of challenging circumstances that have caused this person to feel stuck in life or have caused this person to even feel like they've lost their light. It's like you feel that you view this as someone who has been down in the darkness for a while, maybe not even feeling like themselves or someone that has kind of felt blah like has felt like a lot of blah and maybe you felt like this person has had a hard time seeing things clearly like it's like it's like this kind of spiritual amnesia with the um four of cups here and the 12th house escape and it's possible that this person was coping with some of the difficult things that they were going through maybe with um substances that's a part of the 12th house um, but if not substances, it could have even just been an addiction to situations that help them feel like they can escape or fantasies, things like that, that have been causing this person to feel out of touch with themselves. So you feel like this person's been feeling out of touch with themselves, but that they're making progress in opening up to the truth. And so because of that, you feel like their healing is able to begin to happen or it, it's able to the process of healing is occurring is what i would say so what else can you clarify what does pile number three currently see about their person what is uh, most obvious to pile number three about their person we have the nine of swords so this could have been someone you know was dealing with a lot of um 
anxiety, a lot of overthinking, not seeing things clearly, maybe even seeing worst case scenarios in life, catastrophizing. You may have seen this as someone that was dealing with mental health concerns as well. Um, like they might genuinely have depression or anxiety. It's up to you to know that. What else does file number three clearly see about this person? We have the high priestess. We have the three of wands. We have the page of swords. So you see this as someone who is intuitive, someone that maybe is even spiritual or you may know that they they may have felt blocked from their intuition though i'm kind of, look at the four of cups flipping over i'm gonna get the four of cups coming out yeah definitely a four of cups energy where it's almost like you feel like this person was ignoring their intuition for a while or it's like they they didn't want help or something or it's almost like with this cup being brought over it's like they didn't want to really get to the bottom of certain issues it's like there's an energy here of you feeling like this person was just cut off from their inner self with the high priestess being here in the four of cups. It's like not being emotionally honest, not really tuned into their intuition because of too much anxiety or too much avoidance of what's going on. It's like if we have a lot of um, pain that we're still holding within ourselves, that can be a blockage to our intuition and our blockage to clarity as well and it's one of those things where maybe you felt like this person had been overthinking and ignoring their intuition what else for pile number three we have the queen of pentacles however and then we have the two of pentacles here at the back of the deck um having said that though you view this as someone who's making progress in their life um you may view them also as just almost trying to be more grounded in life right now with the two of pentacles someone who's just trying to for a long time i think you you've seen or not even for a long time but whatever time is relevant to this connection for you it's like this person's just been trying to stay on their own two feet just to get by it's like they just had to deal with their priorities in life deal with their responsibilities and it's like they've been waiting a long time to feel grounded again and to feel like embodied and to feel connected to even nature like it, it maybe just it feels like this person had been isolated or like not in their power or not not feeling stable because for me the queen of pentacles is this energy of stability at the very least it's being very grounded so you might have felt like this person has been having a hard time feeling grounded in life and but they are with the page of swords here you see them as someone who's trying to learn or is trying to cut through some of the mental confusion and that they are progressing within gaining more stability more confidence more feeling like themselves kind of an energy but you definitely view this as someone who's struggling and isn't out of this struggle someone that is still in progress essentially so and it may be that you met them during a time period when they were like this you know like and so you maybe didn't see certain other parts of them or this just could be the pre the dominant energy that this person's been in since you've known them um yeah that's what i'm getting so i'm now going to look at what you're not currently seeing so hopefully you guys will feel like you know who this person is we also have inside looking out here so again it's like this could have been someone who was isolating themselves or was kind of struggling with self-compassion and maybe not really letting a lot of people into their life like they may have been having a, a going through a hermit mode or just feeling a little bit closed off at the heart chakra actually that makes sense because we have this green we have all this green energy here so you might have viewed this as someone who is disconnected from their heart as well okay so now we're going to be looking at what you are not currently seeing about this person. It's not that you don't understand any of this. It's just like an attempt to clarify whatever it might be that you haven't really been sure about. Or maybe you've gotten glimpses, but it's something that you might miss or it's not a focus for you, this energy. 
but it is a part of this person. So we have the golden egg, which is super interesting because in this deck, this is the heart chakra card. And it's an energy where... Okay, so a lot of themes that are coming through is what you maybe don't see about this person is that they may be more connected than you realize to their themselves and they may actually be feeling more connected again than what you've been led to believe. This could be because you haven't talked to this person in a while or it could be that when you're around them you might just see this other part of them um, depending on what the relationship is but with the golden egg here what you don't see about this person is that they are reconnecting with themselves and they are getting to a come and I like how there's this nest which for me is about home and comfort and kind of being burrowed in and so this person has actually been finding a sense of comfort that's allowed them to reconnect with who they are and reconnect with their heart and this card talks about how this can occur through meditation and it's like when you quiet your mind and you quiet everything your heart can speak and so this person is connected with that we also have the Ten of Cups with North Node Life's Purpose. We have Fortune, Sun in Leo. We have Choice. And we have Mysterious Mother. Yes. Okay. So what I'm seeing here um, as the predominant energy of what you don't see is potentially how much progress this person has made. Or you might not see just how good they're actually doing. And so what I'm seeing is that with the Ten of Cups being here, especially after, what did we have for the other? We had the Four of Cups, the Ace of Swords. So the Ace of Swords is, it's like you're just a little bit behind in this person's journey. It's almost like you're seeing them, let's say, like you feel like your their progress is here, but they're actually here. And so for me, that makes me feel like you were more aware of them when they were struggling, or maybe that's just what they've talked more about with you. But the truth of this person is they are much further past a stage where they're just being, they're, they're no longer trying to distract themselves with some kind of fantasy. They're no longer living in la la land or just trying to put their head in the sand. They're actually further past that and they're on their way to fulfilling their um north node and their life's purpose the ten of cups is all about abundance and the ending of difficult lessons and it's it's about a time where you get to reap what you've sown it's not a time of learning lessons anymore for this person and you may have seen them at a time where they or they may talk to you about that again it's like they you might have seen them at a time where they were still trying to figure out those lessons something like that but I'm seeing what you don't see is just how strong this person is. And it's not, I don't think you intentionally have underestimated them. I think it might have just been based on what you know they were struggling with. But what I'm seeing is with the mysterious mother, this card is all about rebirth and an energy where a person is able to find their own light in the dark. And so what you might not see about this person is whatever they went through, whatever darkness they were in with this bat, they turned that into their superpower, essentially. And so I just want to read you number four here, because this is the essence that I'm getting. It says, the mother brings a guiding star through the darkness. She has the ability to move through the absence of light and carry her own light. When she appears, she's letting you know that you're safe and loved. Not only that, but you too can become her. She's self-sufficient. She doesn't need the sun to grow her love. She is a mountain, the light, the love. Calming pink waters revolve around her and into you, filling you with peace and calm. So this person has actually found quite a bit of peace and love. And I like that the pink colors here because that's one of the colors of the heart chakra as well. So this person is in their truth already and they're not stuck is what I'm seeing. They're not in a stuck position anymore. And I like that this gold is here as well. So it makes me feel like this person's mindset and their heart are in alignment. And they're on their way to a lot of fortune with the fortune card here, a lot of success. It To me, this feels like a long-term journey that this person's been on, but it's finally 
getting to this point where the the darkness doesn't haunt them it's a part of their purpose now and so they've come out on the other side i'm hearing the song i deserve congratulations oh super bloom because that came out the other side um i didn't know if i was going to make it or something like that but yeah this person's super blooming essentially um i'm also hearing the song um by rihanna and Nicki Minaj and it's like it's one of my favorite songs honestly even though it's such a random song it is it's it's called fly so it talks about I came to win um and it talks about essentially the journey of going through a lot of difficulties but not giving up and having that perseverance and so what you might not see is that this person despite what they've been through they're back <laughs> I'm hearing <laughs> I don't even know what I'm hearing but it's like this person's back again and back and better than ever um yeah so let's get some tarot to to clarify what you might not see they're in their power essentially What does pile number three not currently see about their person? I saw the page of pentacles. Yeah, so this person might be um, going down a new venture or they may be, yeah, with the ace of pentacles. There may be something this person's working on that's going to be very successful or it's already become successful. We have the eight of cups. What does pile number three not see about their person? With the Queen of Swords, yes. Um, what you might not see is that this person's already stepped into their power and they've walked away from what no longer emotionally serves them. So instead of, and I love that the Queen of Swords is here too because this person, for me, it's like the Four of Cups is possibly something that would keep you in an energy of um, complacency or like for me the four of cups is when you're not really emotionally satisfied in life but you don't really want to do anything about it this person's not in that energy they've actually already moved away from what doesn't emotionally serve them through stepping into their queen of swords energy which i like that the ace of swords was coming through um already so it's like you do know that this person has been stepping into that but maybe you don't know how far they've already progressed because this is the Ten of Cups as well. So I would say the bi biggest misconception with this person is that they're not as far along their journey. But they actually are. Maybe they've already made a choice here with the choice card. I, why, I just want to really quickly, why is the choice card here? I saw the lovers. You're the King of Pentacles. Yeah, so there may be... That maybe this person has a lot of options in their life right now. Like, I feel like they're just doing better than you might have expected is what I'm getting. Um, this person doesn't feel restricted or like they need to settle in their life at all right now either. Um, what else is pile number three not see about their person? Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, that they're um, on their way to success. That they are living out their purpose. That they might be doing financially well. That they... Might be, you know, they might have gotten a lot of money or they might be really, um, I'm not getting that they're there yet, but I'm seeing that this person is, I like that this hand is up with this sword right at the 10 of pentacles. This person knows exactly what they're doing in life and they know what their path is to, they're following their own light and they know what is going to lead them to their path and even a legacy. This person might even be working on some kind of a legacy that they'll leave behind. Yeah, Ten of Cups as well. Yeah, that's what I was getting is this person, Eight of Cups, they've already walked away from what doesn't serve them. They're on their way to the Ten of Cups. They're old to, we have Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups. So again, the main message here is that this person is not struggling. Like this person is, the, the path is clear now and they're on their way. What else is found number three not see that their person... Two of wands, yeah. They're all, again, like, and that's exactly what I was getting with the Queen of Swords, 
is that they know what their direction is. This person's holding the world in their hands and they have a plan, right? So this is just a, a really good clarifier here. It's like they have their eyes logically on their finances and they have their plan for their financial future, um, for what's going to be ultimately happy for them. It's like they are making the decisions that they need to make. They're making very clear decisions. They're being courageous. They're not afraid of making decisions. The two of wands is also about decisions. They're in a place where they're making very heart-based decisions and decisions that are, they're standing in their truth essentially. We have the Knight of Pentacles. Then we have the Seven of Wands. Yeah, so I'm seeing that this person um, with the Knight of Pentacles here, what you might not see is just how dedicated they are or how consistent they've become, especially if you maybe thought this person in the past was a little bit misdirected or it might have felt like they didn't have the perseverance at that time. This person is slowly but surely making their way towards success and happiness for their future with the seven of wands yeah this person is very protective right now they're on their pedestal essentially and they have their boundaries up this is someone who has something to protect now it's like they've had some kind of a victory and they're in a very empowered position and it's like they've wised up quite a bit with the queen of swords here as well um I'm hearing I, I call I'm calling the shots so very empowered energy here a very involved energy is what I would say also is a part of what you thought about this person maybe what you knew about them was that they maybe were struggling to find their path or to find direction uh, maybe you felt like they weren't really making as much progress but this person's like already on the other side um I just want to ask, like, what this also could be a reverse pile, you guys, where, you know, take it. It could be reverse for you. This could actually be your energy. And it's like as if a person was asking about you. Um, but I want to see why, why does pile number three not see this right now? Why is it hard for pile number three to see this about this person? We have death because yeah so they've gone through an, a, a major transformation um and yeah so you might have known a past version of themselves or you might have seen this person like lose something or go through some kind of a death process um because they've completely transformed is what i'm getting essentially um hmm that's interesting I want to see if there's anything else I want to get into. They're just very stable right now is what I'm getting. Stable and in their truth. It's like they have their boundaries really clear. They know what fits in their life and what doesn't. Um, they're manifesting really well because they, they, uh, they can sense very well what is not going to bring them emotional satisfaction and what is. Yeah. That's interesting. So for the extended reading, we're going to be looking at what this person would want you to know, what they would tell you. Um, we're also going to look at where the connection with them is headed or if there's anything you need to know about the future of the connection and it'll be tailored to what your concerns are, what your biggest questions are. And then we'll be getting advice for you on this connection. We'll be looking at any blockages that there are or overall what you need to hear about this, what spirit really wants you to know. So this is kind of a quicker reading than I expected, but... Oh, wait, let me get um, what we had for your card. So, I don't have these memorized, but I want to read it to you. So, we have Attraction with Pansy. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> my throat just got really dry. Sorry. All right, 34... Oh my gosh, I need more water, you guys. Sorry, I got like an itch in my throat where it's like you can't ignore it. So, 
pansy attraction. In gardens, beauty is a byproduct. The main business is, I can't say, and death. It says pansies indicate that people are being pulled into your life who align well with you. Romance may, on, may be on the agenda, but this energy also helps build community and friendship circles, possibly where learning takes place. It's time to step back a little and relax into what's happening naturally. Hesitation and overthinking could cause blockages and watch out for deception and gossip. So this is Saturn in Libra. Okay, so what you might not see, especially about this person, is that they've balanced out the relationships in their life. Maybe they were going through a lot of difficult lessons when it came to the relationships in their life. That could be romantic or otherwise. But I'm seeing now that this person is drawing in a lot of options towards them. I think it's romantic, but I think it's also like friendship. This is someone who's rebuilding their community with the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. It's like they've gotten through some sort of a difficult chapter. And what you might not see is just how many, how much of their soul family is surrounding them and how much they're not struggling anymore with relationships and um, yeah, so I just think you might not really know what the reality of this person's magnetism right now. And that they're just nowhere, they're not in the same state anymore is what I'm getting. Um, yeah, so hopefully that resonates with you guys. If it did, I appreciate if you could hit the like button or comment. I really appreciate your feedback. But for those of you that want to head into the extended, I will have it linked down below underneath the timestamps. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more Pick a Card readings from this channel. And I hope to connect with you again soon.